broke, I woke up quite late as someone well. And uh, uh, my friend Maji told me that uh, uh, the police are outside. I was uh, aware that they were informed that I'm unwell. So they were outside and specifically to effect an arrest. So I got prepared and we went together uh, with uh, two uh, female officers to Woodlands Police Station where an arrest was uh, effected on me. The specifics of the charge are that uh, uh, at dates unknown, but in September 2020, in January, I had uh, uh, access to Milton Hatembo and uh, Feluna Hatembo and uh, threatened them violence. And having threatened them violence, that caused them to run away from their homes and stayed at different lodges against their will. And subsequent to that, I, with different, uh, with persons unknown, I don't know if they are unknown to me or to them, uh, did abduct uh, Feluna Hatembo. An arrest was uh, effected and I've been released on a police bond uh, at my own cognizance. Uh, I did ask uh, the senior officer responsible for the operation as to whether my lawyer had not furnished him with medical reports from the university teaching hospital and a private uh, medical facility. He said he had received them and uh, he said that he was expecting me to go to court, to go to the police yesterday. And I said that the last report was on Thursday, in which the doctor was very specific that I should not be distressed. I should refrain from strenuous activities because I was uh, being treated, awaiting a surgical procedure. I think that it's very clear that uh, the police are under extreme pressure. It's very, very clear because uh, even asking them as to whether it's abnormal for a, a suspect to tender a medical report, he answered in the affirmative that it was not abnormal. There are times when uh, officers uh, are found at the scene of crime where the suspect in the crime is injured. They do take them to the hospital. My case seems to be very strange that uh, the police officers can't accept my medical reports and therefore they've effected an arrest. But I understand the police on their own are very, very professional. If they are left to do the work that they've been given where the complainers are complaining of something, they can do a professional job. But uh, I sympathize with the police. They are working under extreme conditions where the head of state is forcing them to do things which ideally, under their training, they wouldn't do. Um, I don't want to belabor the point that uh, I'm unwell, because I have told them that I even have visas to travel next week. So if I'm traveling next week, I'm certainly unfit to be in a situation where I'm being inconvenienced. I should be pre making preparations to travel. So, and I'm traveling because, certainly because the, the environment uh, in our hospitals is very hostile because they had sent them before to smoke me out of UTH. I mean, I cannot be in bed and uh, the doctors are forced to issue uh, medical reports in their own handwriting, which reports are then circulated the very next minute, within 30 minutes, on the causeway. And you will know who Kosway is. It's a branch of this gutter media within the house of state house. So I realized that uh, my life was at risk because they could actually crawl behind my back and poison me. No one, none of you know that actually this uh, has been caused by uh, some undesirable elements within the state. So I decided that I was going to seek medical attention out of the borders of the Republic. And therefore, I mean, against my will, I've never done that. But 
uh, I have to do it because the environment is extremely, extremely hostile where they're even posting that, well, we hope she comes back dead. So I, this is a situation. No one wants to see this kind of publicity, but uh, I, since you got to know that I'm arrested, it was a public issue. The police were camping at my gate. So uh, you may as well know that I've been arrested. And the specific case is a, is a hatched up scheme by UPND and their leader to try and wash their debt, which they created during the run up to the elections. Because Hagai Nigeria knew that if the fraud charge, which Feluna had complained against him of fraudulent repurchasing from farm number 1921, was preferred on him, he probably would not have run for election. So he was the interested party in Feluna not appearing in court. In fact, most of the videos aired by Milton and uh, the sister consistently say that Nawaki was trying to force them to appeal against the judgment in the high court which said Feluna could not prosecute her case because it was time bad. Now, the appeal was to the extent that a fraud, a criminal offense, has no time limit. If you killed someone 30 years ago, you can't say, no, it's time bad. That is a code file. So the code file of fraudulent acquisition of firm number 1921-24 will never die because there are issues there. One, there was a Lima Bank mortgage, and that mortgage was lifted within 24 hours by unauthorized officers. Niza Piri and Mr. Mle, Madam Mlenga, they went to lands and lifted the mortgage. A Lima Bank mortgage, it could only have been lifted by the liquidator. Having lifted that mortgage, the title was transferred the very following day to Haka Inde Ichilema as a new owner. That's point number one. Point number two, that from 1924 was in fact a property of a demised person. Given the magnitude and size of that farm, not one person, whether administrator or otherwise, could actually execute the conveyancing on that property without high court order. That's a fraud number two. How did Haga Inde Ichirema, an educated person, receive a property transferred to him, it being a property of a demised person without the order of authority to sell from the high court as under the Intestate uh, and Succession Act of 1989. Those are some of the issues. So uh, for me, the most interesting part about it was that Hagai Nechirema kept on saying that in his lifetime, he has never held the property of Lima Bank. And I can tell you that Farm Number 1924 was a property of Lima Bank. I was trying to look for evidence to defend myself, and that's how I come across these people. Having had that evidence, I would never have wanted them to be witnesses in court because it was in black and white that uh, the property was mortgaged to Lima Bank. That's so all I needed. Now, Feluna came along and said, this same person had said that she saw the farm. She never saw the farm. She never signed for it. She has never met him. And these are on record in audio videos. They are not from me. You can look at the record. All of you who want to Google Feruna Hatembo, you see that she says in her own words, I never met her kind. I never sold him the farm. I don't know who sold him the farm. So, I don't know why UPND people are so down as to revive all the issues. Because this issue is not favoring their president. This issue is an embarrassment. And to the extent that it had gone, I don't know why they want to come round. They actually went to, to, to Monze and picked up Milton to ask him, we interview you, raise a case of abduction against Nawak. Now, Milton and her sister were released a week after inauguration. 
the lunar telephone the number of people and said, I have met him, Mr. <laughs> he says that after inauguration, he will be released. Who was being inaugurated? And for sure, after inauguration, she was dropped in Choma. So she herself, since she's the one who, uh, accusing me, she'll be in the court. We'll ask her who she met before inauguration. And uh, we will also ask her, since she says she was in different hotels, you will see that at one of the named hotels in Choma, the people behind the, the press conference was none other than partner Siabutuba and Nicholas Piri. Literally everybody who was involved in running around with Feluna Hatembo has been rewarded a job. Nicholas is a permanent secretary. The reporters who were in the scheme, I know that Zipora Mushara is now working for government. Now, if those people were my agents, how come they are being given government jobs? Because they say, I, together with unknown persons, we abducted them. But how come after they being abducted, they were found in the presence and supervision of Nicholas Piri? and the partner Siam Tuba. Literally every press conference which was conducted either in a maze field or in Kalomo or wherever or in Rusaka, that was with the supervision of Vitukule. Now, Zitukule was an NGO working for UPND. No wonder Nicholas Peer is now the permanent secretary of the current government. All these are questions which we need to to be answered by these people. How come Nicholas Piri was supervising them? When we took him to task, he said he was a human rights activist protecting the rights of these people. Now, if you are protecting their rights, it means they are safe. So how come I abducted them? They were in a custody of Nicholas Piri, but I also abducted them. They came here, according to the, to the charge, they came here to ask for my help, but Milton clearly says, I was with my cousin Margareta because I didn't know where to find the court of appeal and Lars. The other question, who wrote those letters for them to take to Lars and court of appeal? Was it their lawyer, Jerry and company? No. Was it Edith Nawapu? No. It must have been the UPND people. After that, they disappeared. And the story is that because they didn't want to file the appeal, because that appeal could have been inconvenienced President Haga in the he would not have uh, filed for nomination because the, at the court of appeal, he would have been personally required to present himself to answer questions. And I don't think it would have been good optics for him running for for presidency and answering questions of fraud. So, you know who was interested in them being hidden? It's not me. I wasn't running. I had no issue with them. Okay.